Hey everybody, I'm Elizabeth McSwan from Emac and Hedwig, and today's video is about how to approach birds for better bird photography. So here we go. I'm sure all of us have been in situations where we are walking around a wildlife refuge looking for birds to photograph and we come across one only to scare it away with simply a few steps towards it. This can be extremely frustrating and I've developed a method over the course of the last few years to really help me approach a bird in such a way that I get just a little bit closer to it so I can better fill the frame with my subject and just generally get better photos. This method is what I call the creep and click, and I'm gonna share it with you. The first thing that I wanna do is, I wanna point my left shoulder towards my subject, like this. And I'm not really sure if this makes a difference, but it seems to work. And my philosophy behind it is that I just appear a little slimmer from the side, and I'm approaching it kind of in a side step as opposed to kind of just full on frontal. And I think that that's just a little less threatening to birds. So I'm standing sideways. I've got my left shoulder facing my subject and I've got my camera up close to my face. Now the most important part is right here. And that is that I do not move my camera from my face. It stays up here the whole time. Keeping your camera up to your face is a really crucial part of this technique. And the reason why is because oftentimes simply bringing your camera from its whatever your neutral position is up to your face to take the photo is enough to scare away the bird. So keeping your camera up close to your face without bringing it down to your waist is really, really important. So my camera is in my hands here. It's up near my face. I'm hugging my body to help with stabilization. I'm hugging my body with my elbows. I talked a little bit about this technique, this sort of hugging your sides with your elbows in my how to get sharp shots handheld video, which I'll link in the description below. I have my camera pointed towards my subject and I bring my camera to my face and I just click, 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 click. And keeping my camera up here, I move a little bit closer. And then my camera doesn't move, my face moves to my camera and I click again. And I sidestep a little bit more and I click again and I sidestep a little bit more and I click again. I just do this method until the bird either flies away Sometimes it gives you no warning that you've gotten too close. It just flies away from you. Other times the body language will just be such that you can tell that you've gotten too close because the bird is a little bit more alert maybe, or even if it's facing you, will face away from you, which is a sign that it's about to fly away in the opposite direction from you. This technique is not 100% effective, of course. It really depends on the species of bird that you're photographing. It also really depends on the individual bird. Some birds are just more tolerant of human behavior than others. Something to note about approaching birds is that oftentimes they will tolerate one stressor, but not two. So it might be okay with you approaching it and taking its photograph, but if something else comes along that's a potential stressor, like somebody else moving really fast sort of by you, or children screaming, or a really loud plane or train or something like that, you should just freeze in place, wait for that other stressor to subside, and then continue on with your technique. Because otherwise it could be too much for the bird and it could just cause it to fly away. Now I would really not use this method for sensitive species like owls, for instance especially say snowy owls in the winter time. Any nocturnal bird that is trying to rest during the daytime, this is a really bad method to use for the purposes of getting closer to those birds. But for small birds, I think it can be a really effective technique. And I'm gonna show you some examples. We're gonna jump into my computer. I'm gonna show you some examples of birds that I use this technique with that I've got really successful results with. All right, so this is my first example of using this creep and click method. Uh, I used it with these barn swallows 
they were perched on this sign here and I wanted to get a little bit closer. I love barn swallows when they're perched like this because they just have this, these beautiful colors and a really beautiful iridescence in their feathers. And you usually don't see that because they're flying around so fast that it's really hard to notice. So this was the first, when I first saw them, they were sitting here and I was particularly interested in this one here, the one that's facing more towards me. And at the time I was shooting with Canon still, I'm shooting the Canon 5DSR and the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter contemporary. Using my creep and click method, I got a little bit closer. I got this. And then I got a little bit closer and I got this. None of these shots are edited or anything. These are unedited raw photographs. And so I got this and then I got a little bit closer and I was able to get this and then this. <laughs> now I'm getting to the point where I'm more concerned and more paying attention to my composition, as you can see. And then I got a little bit closer here. And, and that, that one I think is about the same. I love the uh, the open beak here because you, again, you don't really see this a lot with, uh, with barn swallows, what it looks like inside their mouths like this. And then, and then this was the, I think the last, the last shot that I got as close as I got. And I know that a lot of people say that the Sigma 150 to 600 isn't sharp at 600 millimeters, but I don't know. I would beg to differ. <laughs> I really, really loved shooting with the Sigma 150 to 600 with uh, with Canon. It was it's a great lens. I think I ended up posting a shot like this, but I I did a really really hard crop because I hate. I hate this perch so much. <laughs> it's really ugly. It's got bird poop. It's really bad. But this bird is just so beautiful and so sharp and the light is just gorgeous. It has a lot else has a lot of stuff going for it. And so this method really really worked for this bird. But it didn't work for the other bird. The other bird eventually flew off, which I didn't have a problem with because I really wanted to get close enough to really get this bird only. And I was able to do that. So that's the barn swallow. The next one is a prairie warbler here. This was a Cape Henlopen. Uh, this was at the DuPont Nature Center uh, on the Delaware coast. This was at Cape Henlopen, not too far away from there. And this prairie warbler was singing in this tree. So this was my first position more or less. And then I was able to get a little bit closer, a little bit closer a little closer and then even closer than that and even closer this is I ended up posting a shot from this distance I was able to get a little bit closer this this one was the closest position that I got as you can see this bird is now turned away from me because I had gotten too close and it was getting ready to fly away uh, flew away a little bit after this. Unfortunately for me, it gave me a lot of really great over the shoulder looks, but my camera caught focus on the shoulder as opposed to the head. And so the head was a little bit soft. This is the closest one I got. I don't love this shot. This one I really like a lot. Um, again, like really super sharp. And I really love the, blur the, the blurred background. You'll see how the background really changes as you get closer. If I was going to take this shot and just crop it in, or even something like this, um, or maybe like this, if I was going to crop it in, you do get some blur, but I personally like the background of this a little bit better. It's a little, the background's a little bit softer, and so that really does help with the background and getting just a little bit more of what I think is a more pleasing background. All right, so now we're back to a different swallow. This is a tree swallow. I love these birds. They're just so beautiful. I love their blue iridescent feathers. So when I first found this bird, it was on this, again, a really, a really ugly post. <laughs> Why they like these ugly posts, I don't know, but it's kind of annoying. And, uh, and so I was able to approach it and I got a little bit closer and a little bit closer. I also got a, a little bit more I think I level with it here. And I just continued to get a little bit closer. 
and uh, and so yeah, so these are the these are the last two <clears throat> that I got. This is as close as I got. And again, I didn't post this because I hate the perch. And again, it's really sharp around that eye. It's super sharp. I love the blue against the darker green background. And your background again, it does change as you get closer. And sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes it's not a good thing. Sometimes I actually like the background of my the sh a shot that's further away. I actually like the sort of lighter green here, but it does, I think it does work well also here. So those are three examples of shots that this technique worked really well for. And actually these three examples, this trip really helped me hone this technique and it gave me a lot of great opportunities to get some really great shots of, uh, of these small birds and to get close to them and to really take advantage of their human tolerance level. So there we go. Thanks for watching everybody. I really hope this information was helpful to you. I hope that it can help with your photography. Please comment down below if you use this technique and what your results are with it. If you like this video, please click all the things. You know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell so that you know when I posted a new video. You can also find me on Patreon. The link is in the description below for as little as $2 a month. You can get early access to videos like this along with a bunch of other really cool stuff. In the month of June, I'm going to be taking some trips out west to Olympic National Park. I'm also going to be going to southwestern Colorado. And every day for the month of June, I'm going to be posting patron-only content over on Patreon. So if you're interested, please feel free to check it out. And until the next video, everybody, take care. Happy adventuring. Happy shooting. See you later. Bye.